Chapter 13 of Iracema, the Honey Lips, A Legend of Brazil by José de Lencar. Translated by Isabel Burton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 13 The daughter of Araquém advances in the darkness. She stands and listens. For the third time, the cry of the seagull sounds in her ears. She bends her steps straight to the place whence it came, and arrives at the edge of a lake. Her glance pierces the darkness, but finds naught of what it seeks. The tender voice, soft as the hum of the colibri bird, breaks the silence. Pochi, the brave's white brother, calls him by the mouth of Iracema. Echo only answered her. The daughter of his foes comes to seek him, because the stranger loves him, and she loves the stranger. The smooth surface of the lake clove, and the figure appeared swimming towards the margin and rising from the water. Was it Martin who sent it a Sema, since she knows the name of Pochi, his brother in war? The Pichiguara chief may speak. The white warrior is waiting. Then Mirasema will return and tell him that Pochi has come to save him. The stranger knows, and sent Irasema to hear Pochi's tidings. The words of Pochi will leave his mouth only for the ear of his white brother. He must wait then, till Araquim leaves, and the wigwam remains deserted. Then will Irasema guide him to the presence of the stranger. Never, daughter of the Tabajaras, has a Pichiguara brave crossed the threshold of a foeman's wigwam, save as a conqueror. Bring here the warrior of the sea. The vengeance of Irapuã hovers around the wigwam of Araquém. Has the stranger's brother brought Pichiguara warriors enough to defend and to save him? Pochi reflected. Relate, maid of the mountains, all that has happened in this prairie since the warrior of the sea planted foot upon them. Iracema related all, how the wrath of Irapuã had burst forth against the stranger until the voice of Tupin, invoked by the pajé, had appeased his fury. The anger of Irapuã is like that of the bat. He fears the light, and flies only in the dark. The hand of Pochi suddenly closed the maiden's lips. His words sank to a whisper. The virgin of the forest must hold her breath and hush her voice. The foeman's ear listens in the dark. The leaves gently rustled, as if trodden upon by the restless mambu. The sound at first came from the skirts of the forest, and then swept towards the valley. The valley and Pochi, gliding along the grass, like the clever prawn from which he took his name in quickness, disappeared in the deep lake. The water, without a murmur, buried him in its limpid wave. Irasema returned to the wigwam. On the way, she perceived the shadows of many warriors who were crawling on the ground like the Intanya frog. Araquém, seeing her come in, left the wigwam. The Tabajara maid related to Martin all that had passed between herself and Pochi. The Christian warrior rose up impetuously to rescue his Pichiguara brother. Iracema threw round his neck her beautiful arms. The chief does not want his brother. He is the son of the waters, and the waters will protect him. Later, the stranger's ear shall listen to the words of his friend. Iracema, it is time that thy guest should leave the wigwam of the pajé and the plains of the Tabajaras. He does not fear the braves of Irapuã. He fears the eyes of the virgin of Tupan. He will fly from them? The stranger must fly from them, as the Oichibó does from the morning star. Martin hastened his steps. Ungrateful brave, go slay, first brother, then self. Iracema will follow him to the happy plains where wend the shades of those that were. Kill my brother, sayest thou, cruel maid? Thy trail will guide the enemy to his hiding place. 
the Christian halted suddenly midway in the wigwam, and there remained silent and still. Irasema, fearing to look upon him, fixed her eyes on his shadow, which the bright embers of the fire threw on the broken wall of the wigwam. The shaggy dog lying close to the hot ashes gave signs that a friend was approaching. The door, interwoven with the fronds of the Carnaupa palm, was opened from without. Kaubi entered. The Kauin wine has disturbed the spirit of the braves. They are coming to slay the stranger. The maiden arose impetuously. Lift up the stone which closes the throat of Dupin, that he may conceal the guest. The Tabajara brave uphove the enormous slab and poised it on the ground. The son of Arakain shall lie across the wigwam door, and if a brave pass over his body, let him rise no more from the ground. Kaupi obeyed. The maiden fastened the door. A few moments passed. The war cry of the braves sounds closer. The angry voices of Irapuan and Kaupi rise above the rest. They come, but Tupan will save his guest. At this moment, as if the thunder god had heard the words of his virgin, the cave, which till then was still, roared with a dull roar. Listen, it is the voice of Tupan. Irasema presses the warrior's hand and leads him into the cave. They descend together into the bowels of the earth. End of chapter 13